have an announcement to make. My Mead LX90 12 inch ACF Schmidt Cassegrain telescope is having a baby. Hello and welcome to the program, Sula's Big Adventures, with me, Sula. In this episode, I'm going to be reviewing the Mead LX85 8-inch ACF Schmidt Cassegrain Telescope. In an earlier episode this year, I reviewed the Mead LX90 8-inch Schmidt Cassegrain that my brother owns, and at that time, this telescope was not available. I was looking for a new telescope that was a bigger aperture because the biggest one I have here in California is a 115 millimeter or four and a half inch telescope I've been borrowing from my friend Katie. So I was thinking about getting the six inch Orion Star Seeker 4 Maxitol Cassegrain telescope that I reviewed recently. It has excellent optics. But when I looked on Orion's website, I found out that that telescope has been discontinued. I was a little bit shocked because it's one of their best-selling telescopes and it's an excellent telescope, especially for traveling. Because here in California, if I wanna to go to a dark sky site, I have to drive about 100 miles. So I wanted something light and portable, but with good optics. And the Maxitol Cassegrain fit all of those requirements, but uh, I shouldn't be shocked. It's no longer available. Orion was manufacturing that telescope at their Senta factory in Shenzhen, China. And they also discontinued earlier this year their EQG mount that they were manufacturing at that same factory um, <laughs> right alongside their competitor, Skywatcher. But curiously enough, Skywatcher was able to get their telescopes here, but Orion wasn't. So. Apparently Orion's abandoning that factory um, and they're not carrying anything that was made there. Then I discovered that Orion had brought back the Mead LX85 telescope in an optical tube only. And so I started looking at that. And the reason I was attracted to this telescope is that it only weighs 11 and a half pounds. Well, that's optical tube only, but even when you account for the mount, it's still going to weigh less than an 8-inch Dobsonian, which with the base and the telescope would weigh about 44 pounds. And I also looked at Orion's classical Cassegrain in the 8-inch, but it weighed significantly more than this telescope, and it cost more. So I... I ruled out the 8-inch Dobsonian and I ruled out the 8-inch Classical. That one weighed 18 pounds, optical tube only. And that's when I discovered that they had brought back this line of Mead LX85 Schmidt Cassegrain telescopes. Um, last year, Orion bought Mead and they now make the three lines of the ACF Advanced Coma Free Technology Telescopes. Uh, Schmidt Cassegrain, the LX85, the LX90, and the top of the line, the LX200. Orion had the LX85 in an 8 inch, and so I started looking into this telescope and the optical tube only, since it only weighs 11 and a half pounds, and that really appealed to me since I'm getting older. <laughs> it's, hard for me to lift heavier equipment and also to put in my car to go 100 miles to a dark sky site in California. And even though I was going to settle for a six inch in the Maxitol Cassegrain, this one is so light that I was able to increase the aperture two inches and get this one. And during my research regarding this telescope, from what I can tell, there is barely any difference between the LX85 
and the LX90 and the much heavier LX200. And I think it costs more. Might cost the same in the eight inch. Uh, all three models have ACF, advanced coma free technology, so no coma. And they all have ultra high transmission coatings and both superb optics. According to Orion's website, the Mead LX85, the advanced coma free optics system features ultra high transmission coatings and it's at an oversized low expansion borosilicate primary mirror which is here and a shot boro float glass corrector plate and beautiful diffraction limited optics. This ACF optical system has brought this highest level of optical performance well within the reach of amateur astronomers like myself at an affordable price. This optical tube was 1699 US dollars. This telescope uses Mies exclusive design and the optics have aplanatic performance with a flatter field across the field of view, reduced astigmatism, and of course no diffraction spikes because there are no um, spike veins at the front of the telescope. This telescope was designed and manufactured in North America and the ACF primary, secondary, and corrector plate glass blanks are manufactured in the United States exclusively for Mead. That's according to their website. The telescope weighs 11 and a half pounds. As I said, that's the optical tube with the base for the finder scope and the it is eight inches so that's 203 millimeters aperture and 2032 millimeters focal length so the focal ratio is f10 and it has an internal single speed focuser that provides fine control focus and the ut uhtc coatings i mentioned provide impressive views of bright star clusters and nebulae and greater surface features on the planets. It comes with two Mead Plossil eyepieces, this 26 millimeter Super Plossil and this 9.7 millimeter Super Plossil. It includes this Vixen style dovetail bar mounted to the tube and it has a finder scope base that holds this 8 by 50 finder scope that it comes with and it includes a handle which is very useful for helping you mount it onto your mount. The same 8 inch telescope in the LX90 weighs uh, 28 pounds and the LX200, they're top of the line in this uh, series of Mead telescopes weighs 14. The LX90 weighs 28 because it's mounted to a fork mount. But from what I can tell, uh, the only difference between the LX85, the LX90, and the LX200 is that the LX200 has um, a mirror lock so that you can prevent mirror flop, but that is only important to astrophotographers. And so I don't think it's that critical. And the LX200 comes with the Laws Mandy style dovetail bar instead of the Vixen style. The LX85 and the LX90 uh, don't include that. But other than that, they are identical in the optical performance, the corrector plate and the primary and secondary mirrors. But since weight was hugely important to me, I was extremely pleased that Orion had brought back the LX85. It's so light and this is a great telescope. The optics are superb. Last night I took this telescope out and I first looked at the moon so I could line up this uh, finder scope with the optical tube and I was amazed at the detail on the moon. The moon was 90% illuminated though, so I, I went blind for about 10 minutes afterwards. <laughs> but after that, enjoying the moon, I uh, 
notice a lot of detail in the craters and the plains, and it was really spectacular. Uh, after I got the finder scope lined up, I then turned the telescope to Jupiter, and I noticed a black dot, and I wasn't sure if there was something on the eyepiece, but then I realized that it was a shadow transit of Ganymede, and it looked great in this telescope. The optics were very sharp and clear, and the stars were pinpoint across the field and sharp. Next, I turned the telescope to Uranus, which was at opposition uh, all night. And it, I know it was aided by the fact that it was at opposition, but it was the best look I've ever had at Uranus. It was distinctly blue and it looked really good. And of course, bigger aperture is what you want for planets. Next, after enjoying Uranus, I then turned the telescope to Mars. It was still kind of low in the sky, uh, but I looked at it for a while and I could make out some surface detail on Mars. Again, Mars is getting closer and closer to Earth right now. It will be at opposition on December 7th, so only a few weeks away. But that was a very good look at Mars. It uh, looked great. I was able to make out what I think was Sirtis Major, and I, I think I could see the polar cap. I can't swear to it, but it looked like it. Um, but it was a very good look at Mars. So I was very impressed with the optics on this telescope. I didn't try any deep sky objects. Well, actually I did. I couldn't resist pointing it to <laughs> NGC 7000, which you probably think I'm obsessed with it. but. I couldn't see it, but you know, the moon was 90% illuminated, so that's why. So I didn't try any other deep sky objects after that because the moon was severely interfering, but I think the optics are great. And since they're identical to my 12 inch Meechmit Cassegrain, I have no reason to, to doubt the optics on this and they're great. There was no astigmatism, a flat field through the entire field of view. And I'm very happy with this telescope and I give it an A plus and I recommend it. Now on the downside, two things I did not like were that the bracket that holds this eight by 50 finder scope that they probably consider a selling point, it's not standard. It's some kind of weird width. And so I took it off because I'm not gonna use this. And I had an extra shoe lying around that I wanted to put on there, but because the holes are not standard, I couldn't get both of the screws in. So this new shoe, um, it's only being held by one screw. And the second thing I didn't like is that the dovetail bar has two screws protruding from the end of it. And so you can't just slide it on from that end. You have to slide it in from this end, which is a little awkward. But those are pretty minor things, I think. I think this is a great telescope. They offer this OTA only for $1,699, or you can buy this telescope as a package with the LX85 mount that they brought back for $2,999, which to me is a great deal. But I didn't need another mount, so that's why I went with this optical tube only. And I recommend it, and I think the optics are fantastic. They're no different than my 12 inch or my brother's eight inch LX90 that I reviewed and have looked through. And so I highly recommend this telescope. I will be upgrading this cheap Chinese made diagonal that it came with. Um, but it does give you everything you need to get started. Two eyepieces, a diag diagonal, a finder scope. Um, you're good to go if you have a mount to put it on. So that's my review of the Mead LX85 ACF Schmidt Cassegrain Telescope. That's it for now. I'll see you in the next episode. Until then, get out there and enjoy the dark skies. Dark skies forever. Sula signing off.